COVID-19, prevention is better than cure. It was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. The cost of treating coronavirus is $34,927.43 middle. Texas loses about $85 billion for every $1 drop in oil prices. In 2017 if the U.S. cut the administrative costs to match those of Canada, U.S. would have saved more than $600 billion in that year alone. When I look at the world today compared to a couple of months ago, I am reminded of Charles Dickens' 1859 book called The Tale of Two Cities. While comparing life between London and Paris at the time, Charles noted it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epoch of belief, it was the epoch of incredulity, it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness, it was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. More than 1.55 million COVID-19 cases and over 86,000 deaths in the US alone we certainly might be heading to a winter of despair. According to a recent Time magazine article, the cost of treating coronavirus is $34,927.43. In 2018 the US alone spent a total of $3.5 trillion on healthcare and is projected to reach $6.2 trillion by 2028. That expenditure is more than the fifth largest economy in the world, United Kingdom. As if this is not enough, healthcare spending is projected to grow at 0.8% faster than the GDP. Three score years ago, healthcare was 5% of the US economy. Today, it's 17.7% of the total GDP. This was all pre-COVID-19. States are beginning to open and talk of seeking herd immunity are more prevalent in some circles. If one in five Americans were to get infected we have seen estimates of up to $163 billion in direct cost. Besides the direct cost, we see in a plethora of indirect costs as well. COVID-19 led to a sudden drop in demand for oil for example. Due to this, my home state of Texas loses about $85 billion for every $1 drop in oil prices. New York Times reported that the state of New York could lose up to $15 billion in taxes from tourism and business travel alone. Forbes reported that the cancellation of the Cactus League season will cause the Phoenix area about $100 million in losses of economic impact. We live like poor people, but we die like rich people. Granted, these are unique times to put it mildly. However, the healthcare concerns remain atop of most American minds. Let us look at what causes this and what can be done. First off, let us examine a good example of healthcare that works and is a not a burden to the populace. Cuba's expenditure on health per capita is $971 while that of the US is $10,224. In Cuba, healthcare is considered a human right for all citizens which makes healthcare a real national priority. As a result, Cuba's life expectancy is higher than that of the US, 72.5 years versus 71.9 years, health workers in Cuba have managed to eradicate polio, tuberculosis, typhoid, and diphtheria. Additionally, rate of infant mortality in Cuba has been lower than in the Boston neighborhood with prestigious hospitals like Harvard's Brigham and Women's. As a result of this and other impressive metrics, Cubans like to say that, we live like poor people, but we die like rich people. Cuba has a surfeit of doctors and doctors per capita with ratios almost thrice those of the US. Through what they now refer to as doctor diplomacy Cuban doctors have stepped up to the aid of others at every opportunity. From earthquakes in Indonesia and Pakistan, cholera outbreak in Haiti, Ebola epidemic in West Africa and most recently in Europe to fight COVID-19. Most people know Cuba as a huge sugar and tobacco exporter but leasing her healthcare professionals to foreign governments bring Cuba almost $11 billion each year. This makes this industry more lucrative than tourism in Cuba. How did the Cubans do it? Imagine this, your doctor shows up to your doorstep and gives you and your whole family a complete annual checkup. He goes further to examine and record your living conditions to find out if there is anything that can endanger your health and or that of any family member. Well, this is what happens in Cuba. This proactive slant has proven to be cost effective and yields amazing results. It is from the results of these checkups that doctors classify different residents based on their risk profile. The target here is to stop people from getting sick in the first place. As one doctor put it, it's cheaper to treat hypertension by exercise than do a coronary bypass. What makes US healthcare so expensive? Since 2008, average family premiums have increased 55%, twice as fast as workers' earnings, 26%, and three times as fast as inflation, 17%. So, what are some of the factors behind this cost? Administrative costs are frequently cited as a cause for excess medical spending. 
A 2020 publication on Annals of Internal Medicine cites that administrative costs in the U.S. account for about 34% of the total healthcare expenditure. This was twice that of Canada. One of the main drivers of this is the huge array of usage and billing requirements from multiple payers. A study showed that in 2017 if the U.S. cut the administrative costs to match those of Canada, U.S. would have saved more than $600 billion in that year alone. This is almost equivalent to the Illinois GDP. Drug costs are rising. Abiraterone is a drug used to treat metastatic prostate cancer. Now, this drug does not cure but merely extends life by an average of 4 months. The cheapest this drug can be sold at is $10,000 per month. Johnson & Johnson that make this drug justifies the cost by saying the funds are needed to pay for research and development of future drugs. Novartis Solgensma for Childhood Disorder has recently been approved by the FDA and will cost $2.125 million per patient. This as you can now tell, explain the fact that Americans spend more than $500 billion on drugs alone per year which is about 16% of the total healthcare expenditure per year. This January, Congressman Jared Huffman put it best when he said, prescription drug prices are literally killing people right now. The U.S. House Committee reported that U.S. drug prices are nearly four times higher than the combined average in 11 other countries in Europe and Scandinavia as well as Japan and Australia. Exorbitant Hospital Costs Hospital care accounts for 33% of the nation's healthcare costs. Between 2007 and 2014, prices for inpatient and outpatient hospital care rose much faster than physician prices, according to a 2019 study in Health Affairs. U.S. prices for surgical procedures in hospitals greatly exceed those of other countries. A typical angioplasty to open a blocked blood vessel, for example, costs $6,390 in the Netherlands, $7,370 in Switzerland, and $32,230 in the United States. A CT scan costs $97 in Canada and $896 in the US, while an MRI scan costs only $450 and $1,420 in the US. Suggested Solutions At this rate, the US healthcare cost will soon be a leading cause of death. To remain affordable in the future we ought to use the vast resources to emulate the Cuba model. This prevention-centric approach has already proven to be cost-effective while yielding higher quality of life. In addition to that, it has come a time we look at other price control measures taken by other industries such as the airlines, energy and agriculture to circumvent ever-increasing cost, healthcare futures market. In the 1980s amidst shortages in volatile pricing, oil futures were created. This later inadvertently stabilized the oil market due to the predictable pricing. What are futures anyway? A futures contract is simply a contract between a buyer, for example an airline, and a seller, an oil company, for goods at a future date at a price negotiated and fixed today. It is a form of hedging where both parties remove the uncertainty of tomorrow's prices. This has been critical in the airline industry because cost of fuel accounts for almost 20% of the airline's expense. A great example of the advantage of futures was evident in the 2000s when Southwest Airlines had locked in the fuel price at $51 a barrel for several years while its competitors were paying more than $90 a barrel. Now, where we have seen oil prices fluctuate tremendously no evidence exists showing that at some point in the future the cost of a heart transplant will lower. Healthcare cost has risen steadily and inexorably for the last 50 years. It is against this backdrop that we ought to seriously think of a healthcare futures market. In energy we look at futures in oil and gas, in agriculture we can look at wheat and soybeans for example. In healthcare we can look at diseases like diabetes as an example. The American Diabetes Association's March 2018 report showed that the total cost of diabetes rose from $245 billion in 2012 to $327 billion in 2017. This same report suggested that those diagnosed have medical expenditures approximately 2.3 times higher than what expenditures would be in the absence of diabetes. The cost of treating diabetes today is higher than the cost of oil we use. After adjusting for inflation, economic costs of diabetes increased by 26% from 2012 to 2017 due to the increased prevalence of diabetes and the increased cost per person with diabetes. Conclusion all known futures markets are in industries that are organized in vertically by specific products. This allows investment in specific crops like soybeans or oats. However, the healthcare industry is still organized horizontally. The U.S. has only three insulin manufacturers serving the U.S. market, Eli Lilly, Novo Nordisk, and Sanofi. However, they all make other drugs as well. This poses a challenge in the investment of a specific disease in the healthcare sector. Changes in the suggested industry serve as precursors for the investment in the healthcare futures. 
This new approach will not only stabilize costs of treatment but will in the long run save patients billions as they battle these chronic and incurable diseases. While this novel investment mechanism needs creative infrastructure, the Cuba Preventive Model should be given deeper thought. We will save billions of dollars, increase life expectancy while lowering infant mortality, among others. April 3, 2020 CDC report shows that many of the COVID-19 deaths had underlying conditions. This again further demonstrates the importance of the Cuba Preventive Approach. I would venture to say that with the preventive approach we end up with a healthier population and therefore less COVID-19 patients with underlying conditions and therefore less deaths. A stitch in time, saves nine.